Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm here to talk about mental health. But first, I want to tell you a little story about my life. So I live a pretty good life. I have a cat that loves me. I have an indoor garden, which is pretty cool. I have finally found my life's purpose, but it hasn't always been that way. So let me start from the beginning. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and I was actually an actress growing up and was on a Nickelodeon show in middle school called Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Pretty dang cool, right? Wrong. As you can imagine, being an actress on TV caused a lot of self-image issues. And no matter what I did, I just never felt good enough. I never felt like I looked good. And I know not a lot of people can relate to being an actor, but with social media and Instagram and TikTok, we're all kind of actors and singers and models and dancers. And that's a lot of pressure. We're putting out things into the world in hopes that we get validated and that people like us. And just like with acting, a lot of times it's not the real us. So the main thing I want to talk about today is anxiety and depression and how we can overcome those things. Because as I grew up in my life, I realized that anxiety was the core of all of my mental health issues. And it came from one big scary emotion. Fear. We are all familiar with fear. Fear is a feeling induced by a perceived danger or threat. Fear is one of the things that feeds anxiety every single time. The thing about fear is it's circumstantial, meaning something happens in your life that scares you. And then after that thing leaves your life, you're no longer afraid. Anxiety, though, is there is no more threat and you're still scared. So what does anxiety feel like in your body? For me, it usually felt like sweating profusely. I was always hot, like on fire. I got really bad tummy aches too, like I could just throw up. And my spiraling thoughts, my head just spun around and around and around with all of these negative thoughts about myself. And the thing about any thought that you tell yourself over and over again is that you start to believe it's actually true. I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest. I would get panicky. I felt like I couldn't sit still. When I went into middle school, that's when I realized that there was something wrong with me. You know, my stomach always hurt. I always just felt on edge, like my skin was crawling. And I didn't think that anybody could understand how I was feeling. And unknown to me, lots of kids could understand. Studies actually show that kids between the ages of 13 and 18, 25% of them will be diagnosed with some anxiety disorder over the course of their lives. So I wasn't alone. But when you feel anxious and you have these spiraling thoughts going through your head, you start to feel really isolated and lonely. And that's when I started feeling depressed. So what is depression? Depression is a feeling of extreme sadness and hopelessness. Something that's not necessarily based on something sad happening in your life, but just this overwhelming feeling of sadness. Some symptoms of depression are a change in your sleep patterns. So maybe you can't sleep or you're sleeping all the time. Also, not being able to do things that you previously really enjoyed. And really just having a lack of motivation. You could feel really tired after you got plenty of sleep. You could just feel, you know, groggy and exhausted all day long. You could not be able to concentrate. Both anxiety and depression can cause concentration problems. It can also feel like blurry vision or random aches and pains in your body. You could literally just be crying all the time. And tummy aches and digestive problems are huge too. So what are some ways that you can cope with these feelings of anxiety or depression? Honestly, one of the things I realized as I got older was pretty simple. It was talking, sharing my story, sharing all the issues and the things that I have gone through, the negative coping behaviors and the experiences in my childhood that might have caused me trauma. I know right now it's really tough, and whenever we're anxious or depressed, it can feel really tough. But always find at least one adult that you know you can talk to in your life. Maybe that's a parent or a teacher 
or, you know, a school counselor. So although I know for a fact that storytelling, talking to a therapist, being in a group therapy with other girls who understood what I was going through was really important in my healing, I also know that that's not the only thing we need. So what are some other positive coping skills that we can use to move through things like anxiety and depression? Well, one of the ones that I used is mindfulness. And mindfulness is focusing on one thing in the moment. One of my favorite mindfulness activities was actually focusing on my feet. I know that sounds silly, but when you're walking, just being able to focus on how your feet feel in your shoes, counting your steps, it was a really good way to get me out of my head and back into my body. Meditation. Closing your eyes and breathing deeply. Sometimes I only get three breaths out of my meditation, but that's okay as long as I'm taking a moment to stop, to pause, that's all that really matters. Nutrition, eating well, truly trying to feed your body so that you can feed your mind. Exercise, lifting weights and going on hikes are two of my favorite things to do. Hobbies, like painting or journaling, writing down your thoughts. Being able to just let loose and dance in your apartment or dance in your house is one of the best feelings. Being able to get your body moving is really important. The last thing I want to mention is believing in yourself. Because all of these times where I and you and other people out in the world have had experiences of anxiety that they felt like would never go away, they got through it. And that's something to celebrate. So pat yourself on the back. So what is the moral of this story? The first thing? Don't judge a book by its cover, especially yourself. My life looked pretty and shiny, but I was really unhappy and anxious. And that's okay. Point number two, use our voice. Because we have a voice and it's important. Whether we talk to a therapist or a parent or even a best friend, sharing our stories and getting things off of our chest when we're dealing with anxiety and depression can be such a relief. And the last thing, finding positive coping skills and things that you enjoy. So anxiety is real, and most of us have experienced it at some point in our lives. But I know for a fact that if we keep using positive coping skills and avoiding negative ones, we can truly live the amazing, beautiful lives that we want. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.